Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Good. Uh, this morning, I don't want the parents and the adults to ignore me, uh, but the message this morning is mainly for the children because it's back to school week. How many of you are excited for that? Okay, how many of you that aren't parents are excited for that? I know Cameron's excited uh, for seventh grade. We went to his open house this week, and he is just, uh, he wanted to start Tuesday. Uh, if I could let him start Tuesday, I'd have left him there. Anyway, this morning what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to the kids about going back to school. <coughs> Schools around the state begin this week. Students today are facing a lot of problems that we never faced before. Bullying today is at an all-time high. Peer pressure is growing and it's getting tougher and tougher to resist. Students are facing pressures to conform with what society deems as normal. Society has changed a lot, even over the past couple of years. Christian students are being told that they cannot pray, that they cannot read their Bibles in school. Society is trying to keep God out trying to keep God out of our schools. Because God is against everything that they want our students to learn and how they want our students to act. But there's one group that can make a difference in our schools. And that group are the students. Those of you that are here that are students, you can make a difference in your school. You have an opportunity to change people's lives. Now, as I said, I don't want to leave the adults out. I don't want you to just tune me out. Because guess what? There's a little something in here that we can learn too. We go to work or we're out in the community doing different things, being shopping or uh, going to McDonald's for coffee. I don't know if any of y'all do that, but I know there's uh, a lot of older Men and women in John's world that don't go to McDonald's for coffee or different places. And they'll chit chat. And some of them are Christian and some of them aren't. Those that are Christian have an opportunity to make a difference in those who are not Christian's lives. So let's take a look at how we can make a difference for Christ in our schools or in our workplaces. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Now, Timothy was very young. Timothy was about the age where he was in his late teens or early 20s. Most of the people that he was teaching and preaching in the church were a lot older. And people tend to look down on young people because of our lack of experience and knowledge. However, Paul encouraged Timothy, and I want to encourage you who are young today, to not let people look down on you because of your age. You see, by the way you act, by the way you speak, by the way you <coughs> love other people, and by the way you live your life, you, like Timothy, can set an example of godly character. Children can demonstrate this type of character in school. Other people be it students or adults, are watching you. You may not think so as children. You may not think that an adult is paying attention to you. You may not think that your classmates are paying attention to you. But they are. They are watching how you act. So if you go to school or you go to work and you claim that you're a Christian, you need to act like one. Be kind to others in what you say to them and how you treat them. Do not do anything that you know is wrong to do. Be it cheating on a test or lying to a teacher, stealing from a classmate, using words and language that you wouldn't normally use, fighting, bullying, name calling, or even not turning in your homework on time. Somebody does something bad to you. Love them anyway. Be kind to them. Be nice to them. The way you act, the way you treat other people will affect the way 
others act and the way they treat you and the way they treat other people. Because they're watching you. You are an example. As a Christian, you and your life is to be an example for others around you. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for man. The way you conduct yourself in class, at home, or at work is a reflection of what you're working towards. If you want to learn, you'll be quiet in class. You won't disrupt class. If you want to do the best job possible that you can, you'll follow the instructions of your supervisor. As Christians, it is your responsibility in whatever you do to do it as if you're doing it for God Himself not for your teachers, for your parents, or for your supervisor. And the reason that, that is is because whenever we do whatever it is that we do, if we do it for Jesus, then we will be doing our very best. We will do the best job possible because we are focusing on doing it for Christ instead of doing it for others. When we do the best we can, then we will set an example for others to do the same. But for the students, for always turning in your homework complete and on time. Boy, that's a tough one. Studying for your test, that's another tough one. Putting forth your best effort in class. You are an example for other students all while you are doing it for Christ. Use your time at school to be godly, Christ-like examples for other students and teachers. They're watching you. You can make a difference. Next, we need to be telling others about Christ. No matter what we do, whatever walk of life, whatever stage of life we are in, we need to be telling others about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 through 16 says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. Part of your world as students is your school. You should be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with your classmates. For adults, you should be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ at work. Or any of those who are part of your world of influence. I almost guarantee you, everybody in this room has friends, acquaintances, or family that's not saved. Share the gospel of Christ with them. The people around you that are lost need to know about Christ. Tell them about the things that God has done for you through Christ. Tell them how your life has been different since you became a Christian. Tell them what Jesus did for them on the cross. Tell them how He died and rose again to offer them forgiveness for their sins and eternal life. This is one of the ways that you can set an example by the way you act at school with a Christ-like character. By telling other people about how Christ has made a difference in your life. However, the way you act will be a reflection of that as well. If you sit in class quietly, you pay attention, you listen to the teacher. And this also goes for church. Sunday school, church. If you pay attention in class and you listen to the teacher, then you do what's required of you. You are setting an example that will show the gospel of Christ. You are living the gospel of Christ. However, you must talk. You must be able to tell people the gospel of Christ. Show them that you care about them by telling them about what God has done for you and what He is willing to do for them through Jesus Christ. It is important to each and every one of us that we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Second, finally, this is mainly to the children. But be obedient at home and at school. Obey your parents. Number one, Colossians chapter 3, verses 20 says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. This says in everything. This doesn't say when you want to. 
<laughs> when you feel like it. When they're not being mean parents. When they make you do your homework. When they make you study for your tests. They're just doing it because they want you to do your best. I should say we because I'm a parent with a kid that has to do his homework and has to study for tests too. I'm not telling you to do these things to be mean. I know you like to think that we're mean, but we want what's best for you. When they make you do your chores, I didn't see any ears perked up on that one. When they make you do your chores, they're trying to teach you about responsibility. Don't just whine about it. Don't argue about it. Just do it. Obey them and everything. Now, the Bible doesn't say this, but I'm going to throw it in there. As many of you may know, I was raised by my grandparents. And I know many of you are grandparents and you spend time with your grandchildren. But kids, obey your grandparents. That's just as important as your parents. You should obey them because you respect them. You should obey them because you respect your parents. They have your best interest at heart, just like your parents. Obedience to your parents and to your grandparents will not only help you achieve your best, but it will help you to learn what they've learned. It's just another way that you can set a Christ-like example for your friends. They will see that you respect and obey your parents and your grandparents. They in turn might do the same at their house. They see that you have a much better relationship with your parents because of your obedience. If they're having problems at home because they have a bad attitude and they're disobedient, then maybe it will help them to do better. Finally, obey the adults in school for you us older people that have a job, obey your boss at work. Romans chapter 13 verse 1 says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. These governing authorities include those who are your teachers, who are principals, who are other workers at your school. As adults, they have authority over you while you're at school. God establishes all authorities. Since God establishes all authorities, that includes the authorities at your school. That includes our bosses at work. God has placed each person that has authority over you there, authority over you, He's placed them there with purpose. It's most likely to help you have a safe and organized structure in which you can learn at school, and work at work. They're there to help you to do the best that you can do and to be the best person that you can be. It is important that you obey them just as you would your parents. In other words, don't talk back to your teachers. Don't disrupt class. Don't speak out of turn. Don't argue with your boss. One of the things that drove me crazy is the supervisor was my employees arguing with me about something that they knew was the way it was. I didn't make the rules. I just expected them to follow it. Your teachers expect you to do the same thing at school. Obey them. Help them when you can. Encourage your classmates to do the same. If you're working, encourage your coworkers to do the same. You are setting an example for those around you. <laughs> when you misbehave and they know you're a Christian they know you go to church on Sunday they're going to misbehave with you because they think it's okay to do that so set an example for those around you in obedience by showing your teachers and the other adults in school the proper respect you are being a Christ like example now I understand that I focused a lot this morning on children However, as adults, there is something that we can get out of this message as well. See, it's important for all of us, children and adults alike, to be a Christ-like example for those around us. Everything that we do should be done as if we are doing it 
for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not for ourselves and not for anybody else. We need to be sharing the gospel of Christ wherever it is that we go. Children, you need to obey your parents and your grandparents. And then we all, no matter what age, must obey the authorities that God has placed before us. Whether you're in school or work or wherever you are, these authorities have been established, established by God. Children, as you go back to school tomorrow, do the best that you can do to be the best example of a Christian, Christ-like character that you can be. This morning, do you know Christ as your Savior? Can you go to school tomorrow and tell them that you're a Christian? Can you go to work tomorrow and tell them that you're a Christian? If you can't, I'd like to offer you the opportunity this morning, a time of invitation, to give your life to Christ. There is no age limit on becoming a Christian. <coughs> on either end of the spectrum. If you understand the Word of God, you can become a Christian. So this morning, if you don't know Christ, come forward as we sing. Or, if you need prayer for anything, come forward so that we can pray for you.